<laughs> okay, well, I will um, reopen our, uh, our meeting, which we, uh, which we had recessed. And we have two, uh, two uh, report presentations tonight. Uh, um, Doug Zorzi, Pero Pinto, and Alan Goldman, and uh, Ruben and Charlotte Sherman. Um, and Doug, since you have a written handout, I'm going to call on you to come up first and distribute that. Put everything in writing so you don't have to listen to my scratchy voice with due respect. Um, if you could take just the time to read through, I think it will. Thank you. And um, please pass them around. And this is technically the reply to the report, so we should write the report first. So we have the report, and I assume everyone's had a, gotten that and had a chance to read it. I got copies of <laughs> now, if you all need it. And I'm going to suggest we just uh, take a couple of minutes to read this and then take it up. We have a seat, Doug.
And when everyone has had a chance to review it, I'll ask the committee to present their uh, report. Bob and I haven't caucused on this. Um, Bob, you were, and, and Rosie Kruger is the one who wrote it. Um, uh -huh. Rosie is not feeling well and so is not here. So it's you or me, Bob. I think you gave me the choice. I was, I was guessing that might be the case. Um, so I hope everybody's had a chance to read the report that we submitted. Um, I will try not to rehash it. Um, but I think the, the high points of it are um, that the, um, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let Doug argue his case and I'll, I'll come down to what, what we looked at in particular. So the assessor suggested three comparable sales, which are discussed in here. Um, one being um, to to the left as you're facing. I'm sorry, I've, I've, I'm losing east and west. Actually, I think that's probably west. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other being uh, a parcel on. Um, so that's the 18-acre parcel on Berry Street, and then there's across the river on Isabel Circle another parcel that's under contract. Um, so we, we considered those two. There was a discussion of the fact that a portion of this property had been sold, and so there was kind of a sales value that was established on that. The appellant made arguments about a concern about the expectation that the TIF district, you know, kind of influenced the purchase price. I think in the minds of the committee, we, we sat that one aside rather than having that as an argument about did it influence or didn't it influence. So we sat that as a comparable to the side. We did because there was also a discussion of the value of the country club road property, so known as the golf course of the Elks Club, and considered that as, as a, um, um, a, a comparable. And um, noted that the um, prior owners, or the current and prior owners of the property had agreed to a $1.5 million uh, evaluation of the property that was established, that was, and Doug talks about it in his response, that was part of a process of trying to put a price on it. We felt that that was a compelling one in that the owners of the property um, based an easement purchase price based on that. So there was some acceptance of on the owner's part of, yes, that's what the value was. And we talked about that in here. Um, so we thought the sale of the 18 acres was a good comparable. We thought the sale of the country club property was a good comparable. We listened to the argument, we listened to all of the arguments, of course, but um, another one was about kind of the um, restrictions on the use of the property. Uh, the appellants offered as part of their testimony when they were here last a portion of an easement that described, de described the easement, but uh, if you read the entire um, easement, you will, you will see that, in fact, there was um, no restrictions. It didn't preclude in any way uh, a further negotiation about easements that could be obtained across there. We certainly heard the argument that the appellants were making about the cost of development, um, but honestly, we're not terribly swayed by that. And what I think, oh, 
And based on both the sale of the country club property, the 18-acre property, and the fact that 1.5 had been an agreed upon price a number of years ago, we were really thinking, gosh, the assessed value of this property ought to be what it was originally, which was on the order of about 1.5 million. We then realized that the acreage was off. We thought it, well, I forgot, I think it was originally thought to be on the order of about 100 acres. And in fact, in the discussions through the review, the informal process, um, the city realized, I think, that it's 94. I'm sorry. 94.1. Yeah. And so based on that, you know, backing in at a per acre price, we talked ourselves into saying rather than it should be the original 1.5 that the city originally established that we felt it made sense to uphold the assessor's original, uh, the final decision of 1,099,500. And that's the report. I think those are the high points of it. Bob, do you? Yeah, I, I, just compelling to me was that the half interest in the property that was sold for 765 and the 2015 appraisal yeah. uh, that was made com was compelling enough for me to say that at first we thought maybe it should be 1.5, but there were other issues uh, that, and the appraiser also was looking at a uh, million uh, ninety-nine five that we this said that we should recommend maintaining that valuation. Thanks. I'll I'll open it up to questions. I'm I'm gonna I want to follow follow up on this question a little bit. Um, wh whatever the number of acres is, it's the same size now as it was in at the time the. Uh, easement was uh, computed and the same time as it was in what it was a 2020 I think when the uh, when it was set for the uh, for that transaction and as I said whatever the number is the parties agreed that the value was a million and a half or a million five thirty and so did that does that make you think, well, maybe that re really is the value, or is there some other? Uh, we, were, we were three minds on it. One of us thought it should go to 1.5. Um, one was thinking, let's support the appraiser, and one was, I can go either way. Um, so, so this is how you came out. Yeah, this okay. is how we came out. And, and your point's very well taken, regardless of the size, the value was what the value was. But we had a, we, we couldn't talk ourselves into that once, once we realized the change during the informal process of the, of the acreage, we, we couldn't talk ourselves back to 1.5, essentially. Okay. And and the change is about six percent in uh, in acre acreage from around one hundred uh, to around ninety four. What, what was it originally? And it was one hundred point two something. Yeah. yeah okay. To yeah. ninety four and change. Okay. So about six acres. Uh huh. Yeah. And so then that raises the question in my mind: Is that reduction in six acres enough to? come down a third, but that's that's just a question that people may want to discuss. There, there was also the discussion about um, recognizing additional wetlands on the property that, again, that, that, that's, I wasn't there at the, mm -hmm. at the informals, but that was my understanding, um, I guess, of, of Marty's report, too. I think you stated that in your report. It's a big. It's a big difference, and I personally felt, golly, if in 2015, 1.5 was a good price, then eight years later, why isn't that a good price given what the other properties are selling at? Mm -hmm. Okay. But thanks. Anyone else have questions? Huh? 
Doug, do you have anything to add to what you've uh, written? Um, just want to highlight the comments regarding the 1.5. When that was done in the 2015 era, it was done by the Trust for Public Lands for a separate purchase where the city was looking at price to purchase. Um, with the bike path, that changed that whole concept because of the loss of access to the 92 acres. That's a big thing. Um, in my mind, it completely changes that 1.5 because of lack of access. In regard to Elks Club, with due respect as noted in here, um, when you do a direct acreage correlation, um, the value comes in at a little over a million for the farm. But when you appreciate that there are a number of items listed in here that the farm doesn't have, um, I would hope that would have some bearing. And regarding the warranty deed of easements for the bike path, um, specifically the attachment in the original submission, there is a fourth paragraph and fifth paragraph in that. Fourth paragraph pertains to basically the 92 acres. The fifth paragraph addresses the unrestricted access area, unrestricted from railroad right away, um, where if there is success in a future application for a curb cut, the following modifications could be made. The city would participate in, and allow those. Um, just be very clear on that. And that fifth paragraph right now, because of the <laughs> lack of access to the 92 acres, really only pertains to the acreage on the west side of Blanchard Brook, which is whatever, two acres minus the slopes and the wetlands, it comes down to close to about half an acre plus without having the numbers in front of me. So please keep that in mind. That does change value. Um, other comments, um, when you consider the property to the adjoining property to the west, the 18 acre parcel, um, that has some observed concerns for development, um, addressing, I'll leave it at that, and to, in short, use that, say, assess value as a correlation is not correct. So Doug, I have, I have one question for clarification that uh, I think I know the answer, but in, in your paragraph number one here, uh, you say the purchase of a one-half interest in the subject property, according to the purchaser, was contingent upon the identified financial assistance for Sabin's pasture as specified in the TIF district application. When you say that, you don't mean that there was a formal sale contingency. You're really just saying that that was an element in, in valuing, valuing it? Yes, you are correct. It's an el element that what I'm told by the purchaser was considered. I okay. was not involved in that, had no knowledge of it, specifically for obvious reasons. Sure, but, but so, so there's no, it's not like a sales contingency where he, he would be able to back out of the prop purchase or anything like that. I don't know the answer to that. I don't know what that... Um, gotcha. What that's, that, that's fair. Thanks. Does so anyone else have any questions for the taxpayer?
Okay. Is there a motion? move that we accept the recommendation of the committee to maintain the value uh, set by the assessor. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Is there any discussion? I Tim. assume I'm sitting out because I wasn't here for the presentation, right? right. Yeah, you don't get to vote on this one, yeah. Right. Okay. Mary, were you looking to raise your hand or what uh, you say? No, I, I, I you know me, I can always talk, and, and I don't think it's useful but for you don't us have to go to. back and forth, yeah. so, yeah. Okay, any, any other discussion? Okay, if no discussion, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thanks for coming in, Doug. Thank you, appreciate your consideration. All right, Mr. Sherman. Does anybody need copies of this report? Okay. Mary, did Rosie write this one too? No, I did. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, so I guess I... Would you like to present a check? Um, <laughs> I, I'm happy to present it. Uh, yeah. I'm happy to have you, whichever yeah. you want to start. Teasing, yeah. Um, so again, I hope that folks had an opportunity to read the report. Um, we visited Mr. and Mrs. Sherman's property, um, it, which is all described in here. Um, essentially, Mr the Sherman's argument uh, for reduction and their value should be, was based on it's the property's location, past assessments, <coughs> the drainage issues on the property and the cost of repairs. Um, in, in the report, we described what we observed and honestly, it's a very nice house in a, in a hard neighborhood, but it's, 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 I, I enjoyed walking through your property, and thank you for giving us the opportunity to do that. Um, we described in here what we, what we saw um, and acknowledged the difficulties of the neighborhood, that, that, but it feels like it is similarly appraised to those houses immediately, you know, that the neighborhood disadvantages belong to all of the houses on the street. Um, really can't comment on what the past assessment was, and really our goal has to be is what is today's and is that appropriate. Note that it is a 41 plus degree of depreciation, which is quite substantial, particularly for such a nice solid building, um, but a good deal of depreciation was granted through the formal process. Um, it, just as it seems like everywhere in Montpelier these days can believe that it probably are drainage issues, um, but didn't see any you know, really startling or striking issues associated with drainage and described that in here. Um, and then we had a conversation about, uh, uh, you know, the comparable properties. The Shermans offered a couple, and we kind of struggled with the two that they suggested. Um, one hadn't been sold. I don't know if it has been now sold, but by the time we were talking about it, it hadn't been sold. Um, and it was also a duplex, so that always makes it harder. I mean, a duplex is so different than a single family home. And then the other one that they suggested was in pretty rough shape. We, we understood that it had rotten sills and you know, basically, um, was in an un, uninhabitable nature, um, which was clearly not the case with the Sherman's property. Um, 
considered some other comparables and they made that the assessor offered and they made sense to us. The one thing that we did talk about is in this fun home, there is a funny little bathroom that is in what I describe as the vestibule. And I just seem to be really pushing it to call that a bathroom. And so we suggested taking that off the off the list and, and reducing by half a bath. And the number that we came up with, I called or emailed with Marty and said, what's the amount that we should deduct based on that? And it was $1,300, which probably also talks, comments on the degree of depreciation if a half bath is only worth $1,300. Some analysis was already given to what its value was. So our recommendation is that the assessed value be placed, be reduced by $1,300 to $217,800. Thanks, Mary. One, one other thing that I'll just throw into the mix uh, because I observed is, you know, if. I think you're, we're all familiar with that row of houses along uh, along River Street, and uh, and you know the traffic traffic is zooming by there, and everything, and, and access to some of those houses, you know, I, I would not want to have to live on the, in the in those houses and have to pull pull out of the driveway to uh, to get onto River Street, and as it happens, this property is right on uh, on the corner of Blackwell Street, so access to this property is not by a driveway onto River Street, but it's a driveway that comes, uh, you drive up Blackwell and it's the first driveway there. So it's a li little easier to get into than, uh, than some of the others. Um, but, but the bathroom was just kind of, they, they, made it, they made it for good reasons, but yeah. uh, it, it's hard to see that it would be a plus factor for a potential purchaser. It's basically the loss of a closet. Yeah. <laughs> so you have an opportunity to comment. Or... OK, uh, just going over your report, you mentioned uh, not seeing drainage or whatever. It's because it's buried. You didn't ask why you were there. But there's uh, the PVC piping or the, you know, the ridge plastic piping underground that comes, you know, down the hill and across in front of the hill, and there's a swale. Um, as for the wet basement, if you'd been there the week before Christmas with the little flood, you'd have seen water everywhere down there and just flowing into the corners. It's finally gotten down to 40% humidity again with the humidifier running, but it's taken it two weeks to do that. Um, the comparables. Um, I'm not sure when 191 River Street was last visited because he finished the renovations and has been showing it. This is Steve Verbellini owns the property, and he has been showing it, hasn't rented it yet. I'm not sure if he's got all the city permits yet. Yeah. Probably. Turn it around pretty quickly. Yeah. And I wanted to ask Mr. Heaney about the 171, 173 River Street that basically was listed after the appraisal for a third off the appraisal. Yeah, we don't base our, our assessments on the appraisals. We do our own independent assessment. But it must mean you should be questioning the appraisals if you're coming in a third off of the I mean, I didn't just do that one. It was someone else in our very office, so I, I was not familiar with her process. But, and I don't know if it sold yet. Uh, it's under deposit. It will close before the end of the month. And did it sell it did. for that price? It did. So there could be the rest too. I mean, who knows? They could have to get out. I mean, there could be a hundred reasons why it's it's listed so low. I, I don't know. Well, I mean, like they list, it, it's in better shape than ours. It's almost twice the square footage. It has a two-car garage. We're both situated right off River Street. Yeah. So I see that as being a valid comparable. But also remember, we're doing um, values as of April 1st of 2023. 
So we can consider that one for April 1 of 2024. The grand list is set um, April 1st of every year. So if it's not a reappraisal year, how do you challenge an appraisal? You, you have the right to come in every year. Oh, you can appeal yeah. every year. You yeah. can appeal every year. There's a limited period within the year. There is yeah. a limited period of time yeah. that you can appeal every year. Make sure you hit that period. And that's, and that's yeah. precisely why, because if one of your neighbors, same house, sells significantly less than yours, then, then there should be an adjustment. So both of these comparables might be usable for next year. Yeah. Could yeah. very well be, absolutely. We're, yeah. we're hoping we don't have as many appeals this year as we did last year. Well, yes. <laughs> well, though I'm wondering just how any of the budgets are going to do if the uh, state's prediction of a 20% yeah. school tax increase goes through. Yeah. They predict they that predict. every year. I know. And I'm, it's it's settled with. They'll come up with something somewhere. It'll show up in the income tax found. instead. Okay. Do any members of the board have any questions for the appellant? Okay. Is there a motion? We did talk about, about drainage. You're right. We didn't say, although we may have, I can't, when we were standing yeah, I outside. Think I don't know, think you were with us outside. outside. I was more remarking on, we didn't, it's not like my property where I have dug drainage lines right. this past I December. Done, I done drainage, Did you do that? But too? I buried yeah, pipes, but you so. buried yours, <laughs> yeah. It actually goes down, there's a swale that goes down, it goes down, so. they put a storm drain inside the sidewalk. So it didn't have to go over the sidewalk to get to the storm drains. Oh, that's good. But then the snow plows, the sidewalk plows that come through and torn out so much of the lawn that the water now goes around that and into the street anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've also had, I think since you came out, two more sinkholes on Blackwell Street. That's all undermined. Yeah. And it's going to yeah. be worse when they build below Isabel Circle. Mm -hmm. Okay. I uh, uh, entertain a motion. I move we accept the report. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Thanks for coming in. I'll see you next year. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're here for. Yeah. That's part of what we're here for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I was mm -hmm. <laughs> So, okay, so that is all the hearings we have tonight and uh, and John and I had talked about doing a little mini training about uh, abatements I don't know if there's an appetite for that tonight or not but uh, we're happy Break to abatement do it. for 10 minutes see what happens how long of the training how, how much how long of the training F sure hours no okay <laughs> 10, minutes. <laughs> 10 minutes 15 good. minutes yeah. something like that we, we adjourned and you don't Actually, maybe you should stay so that if anyone wants to watch, them yeah. watch it, yeah. yeah. Well, this will just be a quickie. Um, I didn't ask Carrie if I could use our tax bill for this. What? I need to use our tax bill. It's <laughs> <laughs> public record. Okay. I also, for some reason, spelled the word break wrong. I hear that. For real, but you'll see that when you get to it. Go. This is my, my packet requesting abatement. Yes, that's great. Give us an abatement. <laughs> Take them all the way, please. Okay. Oops, sorry. I know this is on this board to get one too. Thank you. I will sit in the hot seat. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right, so Mr. Odom, you're requesting an abatement of your taxes. I am. I'm going to start out by having you uh, raise your right hand. You solemnly affirm, subject to the pains and penalties of perjury. The testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Okay, why don't you tell us why you think you're entitled to an abatement? Okay, well, I was a victim of the flood. Uh, caused a lot of damage to my garage. 
as you can see there, I have a picture wow. of the condition of my garage. <laughs> you can see down the bottom left, that would be Carrie and I standing there in front of sharp dressers. <laughs> right on. And the cost to get it fixed was an astonishingly low $6,000, but that's still $6,000 that I don't have, and I feel like since I do have the right under the law to ask for an abatement based on taxes or charges upon real or personal property lost or destroyed during the tax year, that I would, I would come forward. And that's, um, I filled out this form that most, most people do for this process. Um, and yes, the flood broke my garage. It cost a lot to have it fixed. I'd like a tax break. So you can see my tax bill is uh, total net over the year is 62, 39, 52. I think I should have a $6,000 break because I spent $6,000 on my garage, but that's what I think. I'm not uh, sure how you all proceed or if you're, I guess you're, I hear you're approaching this by quarter, but uh, so if so, um, I think I should definitely get two quarters abated at least, but I would I would love a whole six thousand dollars. So that's that's where I am at with this. I don't know if there's any other information I can provide you. I'm not asking based on my ability to pay, so I didn't bring any tax statements or any statements of my income, which I would do if I were asking under that criterion. Um, just the damage on my real estate during the tax year. So I've, I've got a question. Other members of the board may have questions. Um, when you, uh, when this, uh, when, when this flooding, as you put it, broke your garage, um, did, uh, is the garage the only part of your property that was, uh, was affected? My, uh, my basement flooded, but I didn't lose anything in there. So you continued to be able to use the house as, as your homestead and, and, and your yard and that kind of yes. thing? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and do you happen to know how much uh, of your total assessment or your total property value uh, is accounted for by the garage? I don't, actually. I'm sure it's, uh, as you can see, it's a very large garage. <laughs> that was my first question. What's the assessment on the garage? I, I, I don't know. And I actually will say I intentionally don't know because I'm being one of those people who isn't going to know. Right. Um, just to see what you all do with it. Um, but no, I, I don't know. I would imagine it's probably about, it's a big garage, about a quarter maybe. It's a big garage. And, and it only costs six thousand dollars. And it only costs six thousand dollars to fix. Well, right. Which conveniently <laughs> is close to my entire tax bill. So anyone else have any questions? Do you have any questions about our garage? I, I, don't, I don't have any questions for the fake appellant, but <laughs> but about the process, this is this is a good example because how much it costs to have it fixed is not actually relevant, right? right? So what we care about is, how, is the amount of time mm -hmm. it was unusable for. The loss, yeah. But then whether they chose to fix it in a timely fashion or not, does that affect it? So if they just left it unfixed for a year, could we abate it for a year because they didn't choose to get it fixed? Or if they got it fixed right away, then maybe it's just one quarter abated. I think in this particular case, we're going to consider this garage unrepairable. Figure out what the assessment is on that garage. Break that down. Is it truly a quarter of the, of the total bill? Then we're going to abate that quarter for only from, from July forward when the flood actually happened. Not for the entire year, but for the rest of the year. It's going to be for the rest of the year because it's not. There's no use to it. The tax year starts no, July first, so it's pretty much the year, right? Yeah. Whatever the yeah, whatever the tax year is going to be. But if it is repaired, 
if it's repaired, then, then we, we have to figure out at that date. like Rebel Rouser was gone for for two months. So when they come forward, or I think they're on, the, um, we're gonna have to figure out the two months that they were out. What was the tax bill monthly, and then consider abating for that period of time. Uh, you're gonna have some information available at the meeting that I'll have for in, in when this is real. And um, I do think you're going to have a lot of people who come in like this not fully understanding the process. In fact, I think probably almost everybody will be like that. Um, but one of the bits of information I will have is how much, not just how much the quarterly payments are, but how much the municipal portion of those quarterly payments are. So you all can choose, you know, for example, maybe if I am just not choosing to fix my garage for the year, um, and it would then maybe you choose to abate just two quarters, but the municipal portion only and leave the education portion intact. And that's just going to have to be a judgment call um, based on, like I say, you can, you all have the power to base abatement on anything you want. Um, and you can take into consideration if you wanted to the impact on the city. Why so, also look at the education portion? Well, it's just a question of what the city is going to be able to afford over the next year. I mean, you can, you don't have to, it's just another arrow in the quiver, I guess, to just look at the municipal portion. So the city is still on the hook for the education tax. Right, right. get it the whole have thing to pay that. the city still has to pay. Right. But we have to actually come up with the money. It's not just money that we lose, but then we actually have to Right pull the money out of our own pocket, write a check to the fund. state for the education. Yeah. Unless this bill that's in there passes, which probably will, but we don't know for sure yet. And only mm -hmm. under certain conditions. It's not everything. So we also might want to think about, because there are very specific conditions written into that bill under which we will get reimbursed for it. So we might want to align our decisions with that. Mm -hmm. I put in the, the abatement books, I put a suggested general approach you could take to this um, should be near the beginning if Sarah did get it in there. And that's based on the conversations I had with uh, Carol Dawes and Barry. They were thinking of the same kind of thing. I don't have a, my own copy of the book with me. Peek and see if I can find it. It's, it's real close to the front. So yeah. Exactly where. There you go. It's like the fourth or fifth page in abatements related to 2023 flooding storm damage. That's just um, a potential guide you could use in general. Uh, they shouldn't be considered rules. It shouldn't be considered anything you want to use at all. But even if you did want to use it, it shouldn't be considered rules because there aren't going to be any rules in there. As per VLCT, we can't lock you guys down on any kind of rules. Lock us down. I'm on this one too, and I'll probably be voting on these myself because I'm not quite, well, I don't know yet. But anyway. Um, um, would it help to have a copy of the record card for each one of these appellants? For each of them, yeah. Okay. yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll print them out. And you're probably going to need that breakout of... Yeah, that'll be, as you know, they're pretty detailed. It'll tell you what the, what the barn, the assessment on the barn is. Yeah. That would be good because I don't think many of them are going to bring that even if I nudge them to. So we'll, we'll get something like this in advance? Yes. With the, the record card? Yeah. yeah, I will get the record cards. Uh, when's our next... Do we have a BCA next week? Next week, BCA, yeah. yeah I, I still don't understand why we wouldn't be abating the, the education tax. To not put the city on the hook for paying that out of pocket, is, basically. Is what we're supposed to do for the property owner? There's no supposed to. That's been a big point of conversation with us and with Barry, is how do you get enough abatements, fair abatements to people without breaking the back of the city, basically. So one approach was sort of theoretically, you know, in a, a defensible way would be for the city to focus on the city's portion of the tax bill. Do they have an appeal right to the state on the education tax portion? No. Non -abatements. Non -abatements, no. Non-abatements. Non-abatements. But and it's totally discretionary, and that's one of the things. This is uh, the statute is in the binder, but it says. Uh, section 1535 says the board may abate in whole or in part taxes, interest, or collection fees, and then it goes down from there. But we could say we feel bad for you, but 
the city's in such bad shape financially that we just can't afford to give you an abatement. Or we could say uh, that same thing, that we want to protect the city's uh, funds and not uh, abate the education portion, or at, but we might change our minds. We might go more if, if this bill passes, mm -hmm. because there is language in the bill that says if, if it passes, the towns can go back. Oh, that's interesting. So I was about to ask that. So would, they, would we have another opportunity to go back to that? I'll have to, Homeowner I, I think the bill says that, but I well, add to the problem. abatement amount. But the problem is that speculation, it does, it's not a law right, right. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. whatever it says today will be different tomorrow. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, no, one thing I want to be but clear that's... about, um, just so there's not any question, but the conversations that I've had with other folks, the conversations that they had in Barry, and the conversations I had with Carol Dawes, nobody's going to argue that a place that's a 100% loss shouldn't be abated 100% of their tax bill. So that's, I mean, I don't think anybody's, anybody's well, questioning that. We're we talking about, there's also land value. And well, yeah. our cards have land value and right. building value. And you can the, split what, that Does the up. land value get abated at all if it's still there? Yeah, well, that's, that would be the, the board's call. Well, that's a good question, that's but good on question. the other hand, it's just say it's your house. That's a house that's uh, that's been totally destroyed. You have no the house is you have no reasonable use of the house. What what good is the land value land doing you until yeah. well, until you've got got a new house on it? That's 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 a debate to have, right? Yeah, it can be a liability because now you've got this big moldy building that you have to dispose of, so it's an additional cost. Even if you take the building down, if you're in a flood zone, yeah, you may not be able the to development crew is going to be in there saying you got to go up seven feet, you got to do all the, it, yeah. it changes the, what someone can do with it. But yeah. when you said 100%, so we, so there had been a discussion of abate municipal, but maybe not to school. Yeah. But again, that's our decision, this board's decision. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when you said there's no question that 100% should be abated, are you saying school and well, municipal? Well, the question could arise, but the, among the people I've been speaking to, there was no question that the entire thing would be. Meaning school meaning and school education. Also. Yeah. Once you get to that, then why don't you do both? What I mean, how do you do? Loss, well, and that's where you have to get some sort of general, hopefully a general standard. In the first, the first meeting, there's fewer people on the docket, so that we can find our groove a little bit, and hopefully by after hearing five of them, if they take ten minutes, and Barry, they're going to try to keep them to five minutes. But you know, if we keep them to ten minutes, or ten or fifteen. We can do five of them, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> these will these will go a lot differently than the assessment hearing. So oh, I think they're really fast. Yeah, because you know someone says my uh, my building downtown was wiped out. It was vacant for three months, and here are the repair bills. Yeah, three, three of these will be easy. Three of the first four are already back, so they were out for. You know, the three or four months, you know, we, we can figure out what the loss, you know, what their taxes are for those monthly. So we, we did agree that we were going to do the hearings but not make a decision until the end. Well, that, see, that's an interesting question because the way we've always done them is we've never gone in deliberative session. We've just had the discussion and done it right then and there. But we could also go into deliberative session at the end and take care of all of them. I don't know. Uh, we, yeah. we agreed that we did were we? going to hear, did, because we're concerned about knowing all of the facts about everything. Okay. Because there's so many similar, there's likely to be so many what, similar situations. Yeah. We want to be, yeah, is, we want to be yeah. fair to everybody yeah. in the, who's in a similar circumstance. Yeah. And the law may pop in and then we'd have a different result. Yeah. Yeah, the other thing that, that yeah, they don't move that fast. Sorry. <laughs> and, and then as you think about these buildings, like buildings downtown, well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're, the first floor could have been totally unusable, but 
offices and apartments upstairs, so be paying rent the entire time. For that matter, I don't know, the businesses on the first floor could have been paying rent the entire time. Well, um, and we've heard, uh, there's been one, at least, in the news that is absolutely paying rent, is not occupying, and they are asking for an abatement. And so one of the things, uh, you know, I wondered about how much can we tweak that. We'll give you an abatement, but you have to split it with your tenants. We, I don't think we can do that. I mean, that's a little scary, but but there is a fairness thing there. If they're, if they're getting rent, then they're not losing the use yeah. of the, and the function of the building. So ah, I don't okay. think they're entitled to an abatement. So we need to yeah. make sure we ask about, mm -hmm. are you continuing to re receive rent then? Yeah, great point. Yeah. It, <laughs> This is a very aggressive schedule we've set up here because we really want to try to squeeze it into four meetings and it may not work. We're already having to add a fifth one as it is. So some of these folks may need to be bumped. We've already got a fifth one with three on it. So these are going to be treated as like we have done as one meeting that we recess. But now that we've created a fifth date, that one will be its own meeting. Um, why can't that because be? we'd already warned. Oh, okay, gotcha. The, the one big one there, so we'll have to well, warn it separately. Still, I, I think it's good to try to push it because I think people are ready to be done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it will be really wise to explain to each person, and I don't know how to do this because it takes time, but people need a good explanation of how this works. We shouldn't assume they understand what in the world we're doing. And I don't know if you can do that at the because people wander in and out. I mean, it'd be lovely if you could do it once each meeting, but. Yeah. John, when does Barry start? Uh, I'm not sure. I thought they had already started, but apparently not. Um, I'm not sure. Is there someone from VLCT that has like an online training video? There's some online stuff. There is a guide to abatement. We can make sure that um, everybody gets it. that a few times. Um, it's possible Sarah has already been sending that out to people, but if not, I'll check with her and uh, have, them, have her send them to everybody. Uh, that could be helpful for them. It's a, little, it's a little bit thick to read, but it does cover everything. If, let, it's let me a, ask one other question. Back to if it's not 100% loss, do we do anything with the land portion? I think that's your all's call well, on a case-by-case case basis. We should be on that for everybody. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. it's however you want to approach it. I mean, it. if you still have the second and third floor or whatever, mm -hmm. and the first floor is gone, is there any effect on the land? Probably not. I Probably mean, I not. I think that the, it's the building that's affected by the, yeah. the right. damage, so. I, th I would. So I'm say I'm probably just, not, yeah. yeah. I'm just saying we're probably looking at the building value and the percentage of that that's destroyed or not. We've had one of these, and this is a long time ago, but there was, uh, we, I remember years ago, and you, Bob, you may remember this too, where there was a property out by Three Mile Bridge Road that uh, the house was, uh, the house burned down, I think, and, and I don't remember what we decided to do about the land value or if we just wiped out the, uh, the, the building value, but. That was, that was two parcels, that was two houses on one, I believe. Oh, okay. They, just, they took the value of the house. It's gonna take five minutes. <laughs> no, I'm serious, there's lots of math, well, particularly if you get a complicated situation. Yeah. And it's interesting because we've never thought about this in this much detail before when it's just been the one-off here and there. It's yeah. been very, it's been very informal and just sort of collaborative and what sounds fair and move from there. Will we have recommendations from the assessor? I'm, I'm looking at the first four. Um, I know the first one, that's, a, that's an income issue. That's gonna be a pretty, I mean, that's pretty cut and dry. Um, the second and third, mm -hmm. I think we figure out how long those uh, properties were not used because those were totally unusable during the flood period. Um, same with Paula Fowl, his apartments. So the first floor of all of those, not yeah. the upper levels. The whole, the whole thing for Bashera's were unusable. Oh really? Yeah. Well, you know, the, well, the, the, the movie theater, theater. and then um, I think sometimes you know the moisture, the, the the one to the left, 
of the movie theater there. He couldn't use the second floor either just because there was just so much moisture. And, and then you've got workers in there. Um, so you figure out what the monthly, you know, you take your annual tax bill, you can break it out monthly. He was out for four months. Let's talk about four months worth of abatement. Okay. So are we going to just do this retrospectively? So as of the date that we make a decision, or are we also talking about doing it prospectively? I, there are some folks that are probably not back in. Uh, Lucky Boardman, I don't think he's fully back. So I, on a case-by-case -case basis, quite a few of these, I think um, uh, Scott Cameron, he's already back in business. Um, oh, he is? I think so. Isn't he? Getting close. I was like, I, no, I don't know where I'm going. going to <laughs> <laughs> um, some of the lucky boardmans I don't believe are fully back up, so that'll be a good question to ask him. Um, but that's um, also choices. Yeah. Right. So what project right. you choose. Sometimes to it is, but if his business, I mean, his, his business, the, the building is back, it's put back together. Whether he has it rented out or not, that's that's not up to us. But as far as the repairs, if they're done, you know, then I think you, then you stop it as of when it becomes rentable. And so that's another one of the policy decisions we need to make. And so it's a question that we need to ask. Are you, is it rentable? Or effective when, or yeah. you need to discuss like a that. case like that. Maybe we should be talking about cases up front. But so, if you've got a project up front that was started before the flood, after the flood, you go yeah. back and keep doing that project. That's your choice, and you don't do your yeah. stores in the first floor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. wow. But if your choice is not to do any repairs for yeah. six months or so, right. well, you don't have the value of the. Well, that was my question with this yeah. this fake case that we got here. If this person had decided not to fix their garage right. and came to us and said, "Well, it's it, no it would cost six thousand dollars to fix, but I'm I'm not going to pay that, so it's unusable and it's going to be unusable forever, so I'm just lost my garage." So they come see me on April first yeah. and we adjust. Yeah. And we adjust yeah. the or what if they say, "Okay, if I, I we have somebody who fixed their garage." a month after the flood. And someone else who fixed their garage. Six months later. Six months yeah. after the flood. Right, yeah. if, if, is there a, I chose to wait six months to fix yeah. my garage, so do I then get these two before when I could have fixed it in that yeah. right way? There may not be a choice. It may be that you couldn't find someone to do right. the work. If, well, well, right, right. So I don't think exactly. there's a choice yeah. in this. It's, it's but hard to get But theoretically could anything. be. But if at some point, we're also creating a disincentive to get work done because right. why in the world should I do it if I yeah. don't have to pay? Do we, do we, what kind of proof do we need if someone says, well, I tried for you know six months and couldn't get somebody? It's, 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 the, they have the burden of proof, and so they have to make us believe that that's the case. People, but well, I think we have a, a commercial landowner here that's got a lot of his properties fixed up pretty quick, so we can ask, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's actually a really good point, point because there are huge differences. Yeah. We've seen right. some yeah. some landlords who fix stuff right away and others who still haven't fixed it yet. And is and I don't know why that is. Right. But do we give them the benefit of I mean, We probably sitting. give them the benefit of the doubt, but... Yeah. Yeah. But for three months or six months or a year? I mean, that's the reason prospective or retrospective. Well, one thing that I know Barry's doing, and I think it may have it up to two quarters now if they're, if they're so late, is that we're going to look at a set amount of time. Like, we're going to hear abatements on these two quarters because we're into the second quarter. Um, and if you want to talk about abating, you know, later quarters, Petition us again later in the year and come back. It's again a policy decision we make. We can do it prospectively. We have that authority. Right, right. Yeah. I'm just That's the reason I'm asking. Mm -hmm. So is that something we're agreeing to, that we're only going to do it for the first two quarters and you have to come back and see us? Uh, that's, I, I'm inclined to say yeah. I recommend we, that. Yeah, yeah. We want to get- We're making our decisions in January. Right. Isn't that the, is that considered the last quarter till you get to April? Um, well, the we next talking payment. about the fiscal quarters. You no, know, I was talking about the fiscal. Yeah. So we're we're we just ended the second quarter. Mm -hmm. Right. The third quarter. Or? Well, me or at that point, I still think we're. Enough places are really back repaired that if 
I don't think we can have someone say in January, well, I'm sure I'm not going to be, I'm still going to be wiped out for the whole, this whole quarter. Yeah, I'm doing this from a, I guess a, not a practical, but an experience thing because I have a property in Waterbury that's got it in July and then was hit again two weeks ago. Oh, jeez. So uh -huh. it's, you know, it's, it's hard getting people in there to do the work. Yeah. Can we email for a homeowner? Maybe, it, maybe a, a, a big landlord has some lineup of people that have always been working for them. Yeah, but it's, 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 yeah, individual would be hard. Like, I want some yeah. tax work. Like, I, think that's true. I think that's true. Yeah. What if we do that? I'm thinking about people who haven't had heat until, I hope you guys have heat, finally. <laughs> But, I mean, some people haven't had it was heat just until, Thanksgiving when we yeah. got our furnace in. So, and, not and that has we nothing to do with not around. trying to get it done. <laughs> right. right. So, that's, exactly. so a lot of this is going to just come down to hearing what the person has to say yeah. and do we feel like they're being forthright with us and does it seem reasonable? But I think years? that we could, we could decide that we're not going to be abating anything in the future. We're only going to be abating it anything from the past, and if somebody wants a further abatement, they come back to us. Like we could say that's, yeah, that's a policy that we're going to follow with everybody. And I like that idea. Mm -hmm. it makes sense. Yeah. And we can, when they come in, ask them what ex what is it you're looking for. Like I said, um, Lucky Borman is very generic, and I, I want tax relief. Well. Like, what are you looking for? How long have you been out? Yeah, Be a little I don't more. Think we're going to get the details from him just based on the conversations yeah. I've had. Yeah. But but someone, I, you could certainly imagine, and I haven't looked read all these yet, but you can certainly imagine someone like like this pair taxpayer just said, "I'd like a tax break." <laughs> yes. But uh, that's pretty typical. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I would too. <laughs> but you can imagine somebody coming in saying that the cost of the, per, the repairs to my building was $40,000. My tax bill for the year is $8,000. So I want my whole tax bill uh, wiped out, and I'm still not made whole. Right? Yeah. No, that's what we Don't you think we're going to hear that? John's <laughs> example. Yeah. yeah. In my house. <laughs> well, so again, a policy decision, but it strikes me that we're not trying to make them good for the cost of repairs. No, no. no. we're no. trying yeah, to no. make them yeah. it only a, a, yeah. yeah. But that may gonna... be something we need to explain in advance. It's yeah. not our job to help them recover or recoup their costs. And, but, and just another on that same point, you know, some people may not be able to get the repairs in the two months or yeah. the three months right. or the two quarters because they don't have the cash and they didn't get money from FEMA yet or they didn't get money from their insurance. So there's a lot of reasons people yeah. can't get their yeah. place together. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be they, hard. Or there's no heating. Yeah. You can't get a heating person to come out. Right. I but, think it's going to be hard for a lot of people to understand. Yeah. And, I think, yeah. and I, I think we're kind of stuck with that. And that's part of why I went with this route on this, is I think it's going to be fairly typical. I'm sure a lot of are really frustrated. Yeah. yeah. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is just a small part of everything they're dealing with. Right. But, uh, yeah, and people are going to say, well, you know, I haven't got my, my uh, insurance doesn't cover it, or I think people who who haven't had heat for six months, I think they're entitled to something. I don't know what it should be, but they're not getting the full. <laughs> <laughs> All right. They're not, they're, if you're living in a house and you don't have heat, you're not getting the full value of your house. Yeah. Is that what caused your barn to fall down? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, we know exactly. We have an amount for the heating systems in yeah. there, too. Yes. We um, have that on yeah. the card. It's, you know, the, the assessed value versus what it's going to cost you to put one in. Yeah. They're totally different, for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, Tim. yeah, the interesting decisions are going to be the process and ethical ones. Like, I think setting a time line like we are smart, 
And then the keys, are there any other key issues that we should define so when people come in, we can at least say, this is what we're doing? And should we type those up? I mean, I think the question about are we, are we going to abate education taxes or just so my taxes. inclination for that would be for people in their home where it's their home and they're out of there and can't live there, I'd give them the whole thing. But, but if that's not the situation, in looking at the city situation, maybe we would just talk about the city portion. So I hear that. Mm -hmm. An element of what I'm thinking of is surely there will be some state relief on the ed education side. And I, I'm a little bit worried that if we do something that that may prevent them from reimbursing us or treating us differently. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering about saying right now we're just going to try to do the municipal side. We invite you to come back on, on the school side, or is that just getting too weak? No, that's, that's just making complicated. For really me. complicated. I see what you're saying, though. A lot of sense, but I don't know. Does right. that make the state say, "Oh, well, since this towns aren't abating the education tax, maybe we don't need to reimburse the towns?" Yeah. Well, they wouldn't if right. if we weren't so, abating yeah. them. Then yeah. And then it'll be and different then the people for each get town. less than they otherwise would have. So if so, if we do abate. Do we abate? Everything or just people who just just residential? Not commercial. Well, the education tax is really a residential and commercial. So there's there's very specific conditions in the bill if this is the way it passes, if it passes at all. And it's a 50% or greater loss in value to the primary structure, loss of use by the property owner uh, for 60 days or more, loss of access for the primary structure for 60 days or more, or if it's condemned. And that's when the so, state will reimburse the towns? That's so, when mm -hmm. the state would reimburse the education taxes. Okay. So in this case, for the garage, there would be no reimbursement from the state if this bill were to pass in the form it's Absolutely. introduced in. For most of these commercial buildings, because it's not going to be anywhere near 50%. So it's not an issue. Yeah. 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 Is, it, is it and? That's a list of and? I thought that was a list of or. I think it was ors. That's an or. Um, it's a 541. Oh, it has a number now. Yeah. yeah. One or more of the following. So it's there a course. Yeah. So if, so if you lost use of it or access to the utilities mm. for 60 days or more. But yeah, if the first floor was unusable but the rest of it was, then that's not 50% or more. And so it's that's a working criteria, though. We, Yes, we, could, we could use that, yeah. and then if it changes, it changes. But we can, for now, we can use it. And since we're, we're going to uh, decide things later, by that time, the bill may have passed. So we could decide we're only going to abate tax, school taxes that are going to be eligible for reimbursement. Mm -hmm. no. Yes. Yeah. Based on this one. Yeah. Good. Yeah. It also occurs to me that if if a lot of the applications are as sketchy as the one from Mr. Me, <laughs> we need to we need to take a lot of notes and hang on to them because it's going to be a month or five weeks from the time of testimony for some people to and, and uh, we decision. Might, we might want to create a checklist. I was about to say. Yeah. I was, I was thinking the same with thing. With the criteria that are in the bill. Say, so well, let's just get, uh, see if you like a little card in yep. front of yeah. <laughs> Go through the list, yeah. Might want a checklist with. It's in the bill, but then it's also how many months? I mean, we need time period. Checklist of the whole thing. Use. Well, I guess that's all in the bill. Yep. Yeah. What questions are we going to ask each person and just go check them off down the box and, yeah. and do it mechanic? We could, I mean, Thanks. we well, might be able to make it a little quicker again. I mean, what we're, the process we're talking, the, the way we're looking at it is going to drag this out a lot more than I would have thought. 
but working from a checklist that we're just sort of going down and asking questions could have the effect of tightening that right back up. And in fact, telling people that we're using a checklist so mm -hmm. they can come in prepared, which is hard in the next week, but. Yeah. Yeah, I could give them, we could show them what our questions are gonna be. So do you feel you know enough to take a shot at the checklist and then circulate it? Um, I probably want to double check with you so there's another set of ears. Yeah. Uh, maybe we can have a conversation um, sometime before next week, or before next week's meeting, rather. Sure. Um, I, you don't want to leave it just in my ears. They, my ears get weird. So also, this bill that I was citing is only about education tax abatements. I don't think it's the bill that Connor okay. and Kate were talking about the other day, which seemed to include a bunch of other things. I don't know what that bill is. But it sounds like it's the same. I, I might have. I, I don't know. But so we don't. So there's a question about which one might actually happen. and. Who's the sponsor for the one that you were looking It's just a whole bunch of sponsors, okay. and, and it's in ways and means, including Emily Kornheiser as a sponsor, I think, so that's probably. But that makes sense. It's just the Ed side. Yeah. But you know what? We could ask Connor or Kate to talk with Ledge Council about what are some of the things they thought about, yeah. mm -hmm. and they could help us develop a list. Oh, we could try to kind of backdoor yeah. getting. Yeah. So, yeah. so that we would have the information just so in case. Yeah. 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 Good idea. Because yeah. they're thinking that about this, the which council is. 50% okay. yeah. or greater of loss in value of the primary structure, loss of use for 60 days or more, loss of access for 60 days, condemnation. Yeah, that's so, what the one out there. So it's the same thing, so that's good. Okay. So, is that the $84 million? Yeah. Yeah. What's the bill number on that? It didn't have a bill yeah, as yeah, of yeah, yesterday. Yeah. It probably I do like your legislative council idea because. Yeah, yeah. we could yeah. figure yeah. out a way to I take because advantage of that. I think that's about. more limited than yeah. this bill. So, shall I, how about I get in touch with Connor and ask him if he can get the ledge council to help us that figure out a way to backdoor that. Yeah. That'd be great. Thank you. Okay. So when did this hearing start? Week after next. Eight, 18th, then, right? Oh, it's uh, not yeah. next. It's not next week. It's not next. No, week. next week we got two more of the assessment, oh. or one bunch, one swarm of assessments, and then another one. <laughs> we got the the Jacobs and um, Wilner. Withdrawn. No. A no. few of them were, oh. like three or four of them. Oh. And they, uh, we passed something waiving the need for inspections. So right. that's why we didn't need to inspect. Good. I think we're done. Yeah. So did we recess back at, was it 7.15 or are we, we recessing be, now? We'll recess now at oh, okay. uh, Good. Cool. 7.48. Uh,